Good evening. Welcome to Heaven Talk, Considerations on Heaven and Heavenly Considerations. I'm Ezekiel. And I'm Claire. And uh, we just wanted to come and visit your screen tonight. Uh, the topic of discussion is dryness. Spiritual dryness. Yeah, yeah. ring a bell? <laughs> it must ring a bell with someone because we had a heck of a time getting in here to record it. <laughs> Somebody uh, didn't want it recorded, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, a few bumps and bruises along the way. More than usual. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we just wanted to talk about... Um, the, the times when you just really feel like you're in a desert, you can't sense or feel or hear the Lord. It seems like you can't touch Him. Um, ever had that problem? <laughs> like right now? Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe. I'm going through one of those desert times right now, so yeah. it's especially poignant to me right now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know, don't want to insult your intelligence. I'm sure that you know what that's like when... Uh, someone once said early in my conversion that when you can't sense or feel or see or hear the Lord, maybe it's because you're deep, deep, deep inside of Him. And when you see and hear and sense something, you're looking at it from like the outside. You're looking toward it. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the center of God, when you're deep in His heart, yeah. and many of the early Christian writers talk about that, that that's really a time of profound growth in our soul and grace but but our feelings are cut off and it is yeah. hard yeah very hard yeah um i was reminded of when you were saying that i was reminded of that uh famous little picture with the footprints mm -hmm. my child i was carrying you, you yeah know, only yeah. one set of footprints why did you desert me lord how come there's not two sets of footprints and the lord answered him because i was carrying you right Right. And in these dry times, he really does need to carry us. It reminds me of a, you know, my first thought a minute ago was a baby going, wah! <laughs> you know? uh, That's for sure. <laughs> again, in, in the early days, and some of you mothers, I'm sure, can relate to this. Uh, if a baby is not nursing properly, many times a mother will draw the baby away from the breast repeatedly to the point to where he kind of gets the idea, and she still won't give him, once he's getting the idea, she still won't give him the milk until he's really screaming and going at it, <laughs> until he really wants it with a, a real hunger and a passion. Is that what you want, Lord? Yeah. You want me to scream? <laughs> I remember a good friend of mine told, uh, told him once, she said, Lord, you know, if you keep playing hard to get, you're not going to get God. <laughs> So I don't know how that works, but we were kind of... It wouldn't of, work for me. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of brainstorming and looking at some examples and maybe some reasons, you know, trying to yeah. troubleshoot some of this. And right off the bat, one of the very first things that uh, we came up with was, you know, remember that we have a real enemy. And it's in a time of great trial that the devil tries to cloud our faith and, and our mind. But remember, he says, I, the Lord, do not change. I'm true to you. I will never leave you or forsake, forsake you. you. Right. We right. know he's there by faith. And um, that brings up another point. A lot of times when he's doing mm. this, um, he's doing it to strengthen our faith. And I, I mean, sure, I'm, I would say, what? <laughs> strengthen my faith? But yeah, because we know he's there and we know that he loves us. Um and he's not allowing us to see him for a season, and he wants to see, will they still believe? Will they still cleave to me? Will they still continue to do all the things that I've asked them to do? Will they be obedient during that time, even though um, they're not really seeing me? Right? Uh, you know, another thing to remember is, uh, this is temporary, and remember the times he's brought you through in the past. It, David in the Psalms, regularly will complain sometimes bitterly about yeah. his trials and his sufferings mm -hmm. but almost every time he goes back and you can see time and time again in the psalms but i remember your faithfulness, faithfulness. in the past yeah. and just recollecting and trying to separate yourself for a minute from the trial and the dryness 
and think, well, how did he bring me through the last time? Because mm-hmm. it's probably happened before, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, well, I guess I counted it up today. I've been walking with the Lord for 35 years, and I can't even mm-hmm. begin to count the number of times that he's brought me through a desert like this. Uh, you know, James talks about uh, in, in the first chapter, uh, verse 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, uh, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you might be mature and complete, yeah. not lacking anything. Right, right. In, in the <coughs> early, early church, some of the traditional writers and the church fathers, they talk about a desert um, of dryness and that it's a sign of I was laughing about this because I was sharing it with someone today. It's a sign of maturity to be able to function in, in the fullness of, a Christ, of being a Christian when the Lord is not re, um, revealing himself to you, when he's not making it plain that he's there with you, and you're not feeling him. You can't sense him or touch him or see him or hear him. Uh, there's, just, there's just a distance there or a, a, like a dark wall. And uh, and some of those writers say that, well, that that's uh, the need for all these affirmations and to be able to see the Lord and hear the Lord is really for immature Christians. It's not for the ones who've been walking with him for a long time and for the mature Christians. It's for babies. And I was telling my friend, I'm going to stay a baby. <laughs> Give me my thumb. I'm going to stay a baby. Because I love to hear from him, and I love to see him. Yeah. And when I don't, I just feel so lost, you know. And, and I mean, I can't, I can't really go to the piano and create. I can't, um, I can't do, you know, talks and things. I can't share teachings with you. I feel so dry because before we do a teaching, we go into prayer, and we wait until the Lord... It has fully released us from prayer. It's been present to us. And then we carry that grace outward into uh, the teaching. And so it's very difficult for me to create anything without his sensible presence. You know, yeah. very hard. Yeah. And thank goodness before we started the Heaven Talk tonight, he let me know just a wee bit that he was with me. Yeah, yeah, you got a, a little bit of a good Oh, huh? I did. <laughs> Just a tiny one. I remember reading that uh, when the Lord gives us consolations or dreams or visions or just a feeling of his presence, it's kind of like going on a trip to California. You're halfway across Arizona, and the sign says <clears throat> Los Angeles, mm-hmm. 300 and something, I don't know, miles. <laughs> Well, you don't stop at the sign and you'd never get there. It's yeah. just a sign to tell you you're on the right road, you're going the right way, yeah. and uh, keep moving forward. So um, I, I think probably consolations and feeling the Lord's presence and sense in that is the same thing. We, we appreciate it, but we can't always just stop and camp out there, can we? Right. I mean, right. we want to because it feels really good. Right. And I normally wait until he releases me from prayer. But the devils are opportunists, and they're always looking for ways to accuse us uh, because they know that accusation brings us down and separates us from the Lord. And so they want to, they want to cause even more of a chasm by lying to us and saying that, well, God's rejected you. You're, you're ours now. You're going to go to hell. I mean, they'll try and come in and fill the gap. They'll even come in with a false Jesus to try and fill the gap. And as you... Uh, those of you who've been with us for a while know we always get a second and third witness, yeah. always, when yeah. we go into prayer and we're given a message. And so, I mean, there are times when I just know that I know that I know that it's the Lord. But there are other times when I'm just not spot on in picking things up and I really need to know that it is the Lord. And yeah. we use our Bible promises or our scriptures and we ask the Holy Spirit to pick a reading for us. And then if we get lying... Forget it. You know, I don't care what was said. I just drop it, you know, like a hot potato because it's not the Lord. But if we get Holy Spirit or um, God's love or uh, 
several different readings. Any of the scriptures along those lines that are affirmative. And you know, that brings to mind, <clears throat> you know, we got to ask for help sometimes. And yeah. sometimes we get so cozy with our, our relationship, my snuggly time with the Lord, that we don't go outside of ourselves and ask for help with discernment. Yeah. You know, part of it might be fear. <gasps> oh, what if they don't agree? Or, you know, find... Try to pray for and look for someone who's mature in the faith that you can trust. Yeah. And just ask them to be a prayer partner with you. And, you know, would you please pray about something? And maybe you have the agreement that you don't even have to tell them what it is in detail. Yeah. But just if you get a word from the Lord or something, I, I'm trying to discern something right now. Yeah. It's okay. And we should go outside of ourself uh we need each other. we got to depend on somebody else sometimes. Yeah, we someone, can't do it by ourselves. Someone like that is a precious treasure. And yeah. I thank the Lord for my husband because he is that precious, precious treasure for me. Um, but the first thing that happened to me in this dry cycle was immediately thought, okay, what have I done, Lord? <laughs> you know, um, have I sinned? What, did I, what have I done? And there was a situation where I didn't totally obey him, and I knew what he wanted me to do, and I didn't totally obey him. And that's when this all began. So in my particular case, um, my disobedience definitely had something to do with the trial. Now, one of the things he's trying to accomplish is humility and a lack of um, presumption. Because to say, well, I know you don't want me to do this, Lord, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's a presumption. And I deserve to lose his company if I have that kind of an attitude about him. Uh, that it's so casual, like he casual is still, friendship. He is still God. Oh, boy. We, we, get, we were talking last night, the buddy friendo syndrome, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Uh, you know, we're friends, we're... We're yeah. chummy, we're mates, we're okay. You know, it's it's good. We're easy yeah. with it. And sometimes familiarity can breed a little bit of contempt. Yeah. And we start to treat the Lord. I know I've done it. Yeah. We start to treat him on a, a shallower basis than we should, you oh, know. Yeah. Um it's and terrible, he's not really. just he's not just a buddy friend though. He's not just your chum or no. what. He's still God, he's still the Lord and that respect has got to be there. He's, it's such an incredible blessing to be able to hear him. And yeah. he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I'll reveal myself to them. In John, he said this. And that's, um, you know, that's been the, the scripture of my life that I love, you know, is, is the being pure of heart and working towards that end. And any kind of uh, vanity or pride or presumption definitely crosses that. And I understand, you know, that the Lord is correcting me right now. Um, he loves me, and I want to grow in honor, in honoring him in obedience. So I appreciate this correction, even though it is terribly painful. Yeah. And that's not all of it. The other part of it is humility. It's, it's like when you are accustomed to hearing from the Lord and seeing the Lord, um, the devil can come in with prideful thoughts. And the bottom line is, we're no, nothing special. We're just committed to serving him. And the fact that sometimes we see him or hear from him is not because we're special. It's because he wants to give us spiritual food that we can share with you. Right. He does that for you. He doesn't do that for us. So that we can walk around, you know, saunter around and be arrogant. That has nothing to do with it. It's totally feeding us and filling us to feed you and to fill you. I'd like to uh, address feelings and emotions. Uh, James Dobson wrote a, a book once, um, here some years back, Emotions, Can You Trust Them? Mm -hmm. And no, we can't, can we? No. No, not always. No. I mean, there are sanctified emotions and there are fleshly emotions. Yeah. I mean, it's just like a receiving a word. There's a sanctified word or there's a fleshly word. You know, maybe you'll pull a scripture up to defend a position to do something that you want to do. And it's not the Lord's will. Or um, a sanctified dream 
I call that a dream with a signature of the Holy Spirit or a pizza dream. Pizza <laughs> or dream. a net surfing dream, you know? It, it's like all these things accumulate in your mind. So um, I think with emotions, it's the same thing. There are mm-hmm. emotions. The Lord had emotions. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so they they do serve a purpose, but boy, you've got to discern. Well, and in this day and age, you know, most of us are uh, it's just at least a little bipolar or <laughs> manic or whatever. So <clears throat> it's definitely not the feeling. Just And we all want to go for that feeling because that's that's the yum yum mm, it's yeah, what i want yeah. it makes me feel good uh and he certainly cuts those feelings off sometimes for me many times it's 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 all about a relationship with him right yeah and do you love me just when i have goodies in my pockets do you love me just because i make you feel warm and cozy and fuzzy right or will you show up and spend time with me just for me, right. whether you feel anything or not. Uh, right. And some of the most peaceful times <clears throat> I've had in prayer have been times when I haven't heard or seen or felt anything, haven't necessarily felt like I needed to say or do anything. Yeah. But there was something about just being with him. Yeah. And I've used the example before. Uh, a new husband doesn't want his bride you know, busy about this and busy about that. He just loves her. He just wants her maybe to just sit on the couch with him. They don't have to say or do any. It's just good to be together. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Well, um, another thing that can come up, and I mean, if we if we know that the Lord has um, kind of drawn the curtain across so we can't see him, and we know that it's because of something we said or we did, um, we just need to trust that he loves us and that he's pruning away the dead wood. Um, yeah. But there are situations where we've been hurt or we've had a false word and it's been devastating and we shy away from the Lord from that time on yeah. because we're afraid of being devastated again. You know, and... <clears throat> Uh, a lot of that has to do, There's. it's hard work to evaluate a message and to know that it's the Lord speaking to you. This is really hard work. And there's a lot of ridicule in Christian community about people who say they hear from the Lord. Oh, they hear from the Lord, all right, you know. Right. And it's a very personal thing. But when you're in ministry, I mean, there's several ministers who talk about uh, you know, what that they heard from the Lord, and the Lord showed them this, and the Lord showed them that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because their ministries have flourished, people tend to believe them because they're good teachers. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that when that happens, there's a time, it's like being in a wreck, you know? It's like being on the freeway and, and getting smashed under a semi. It's nasty. It takes time to recover from that and to begin to trust again that the Lord will not allow deception. And every single time that uh, he has allowed it with me, I could spot pride in myself starting to kind of peep up, you know, little, little ideas of pride here and there. And when he's allowed that false message, he's, uh, he's done it to humble us and to bring us back down to who we really are before God and who God is, you know, and that it's a privilege to receive something from him. But if you begin to think you're something special, um, he loves you enough to correct you. And, you know, I've I've got a question uh, for all of us, and that would be, are you afraid, am I afraid, to be mad at God, to be upset with the Lord? Mm -hmm. I mean, in any relationship... You might as well be honest, right? Yeah. And if, you can't hide it from him. That's for yeah, sure. If you feel like he's uh, duped you or let you down or mm-hmm. let you get, uh, you know, we, we call it hornswoggled, <laughs> it lets you get hijacked somewhere. It's like, Lord, you could have protected me. What, why'd you let the, the enemy come in or my flesh or this? Well, we're not robots. He's not going to put us on the Duracell battery and just let it run and run and run <laughs> like the Energizer Bunny. <clears throat> it, it's a 
it's a learning process. I mean, we're growing, we're being stretched. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so... I've, I've heard it uh, said, I'm sorry, did you want to have... No, it's uh, okay. I've heard it said that uh, all anger in our lives is anger against God. Ultimately, Ultimately, yeah. when you follow the twists and turns backwards, he's the one who allows things in our life. And or could have prevented, right? Or could have prevented yeah. them, right? Yeah. So uh, all anger really can be traced back to God. So there's no point in hiding the fact that you're angry. You know, you might as well, you know, just be honest with him because that's that's where a relationship is. It's in that gut level honesty, and he knows already what you're upset about. I think a lot of times he's just waiting for us to figure it out. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's a period of pouting, maybe <laughs> kicking and screaming or wanting our way. You know, the idea of being upset with the Lord or, or hurt, that's real. That's an honest emotion. Yeah. Look at Job. <clears throat> I feel like there came a point in that situation where Job was hurt, you know? Yeah. And maybe the Lord was kind of hurt some, you know? I mean, there was a... There, it was uncomfortable, it was hurtful, it was a hard thing. And, of course, the yeah. devil is, you know, playing it and jumping up and down. But I kind of feel like there was a point where God and Job had a, a reconciling. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to reconcile with the Lord and just get to a point where, you know, we finally have to say, Lord, I, I just don't know. Yeah, this hurts. In fact, sometimes it just stinks. It's hard. I don't understand it. Yeah. But maybe I don't need to, under you know, giving up yeah. the need to know, the need to understand, the need to fix it, and just being okay with the fact that he's God and we're not. Yeah. And there are a lot of things that are way far beyond us. You know, we not only don't need to fix everything, but we can't right. fix everything. So... We might as well just kind of go easy with it. Somewhere down the line, maybe we'll know, maybe we won't. But you got to keep going. You can't stay in that place of being yeah. hurt and angry or upset with him, right? Well, it's awful. Well, if, if, you know, after years and years of walking with him and going through these things, you always know that it's for your own good that he's doing it. Whatever he allowed... He's going to bring good out of it, and it's going to be a blessing for everyone concerned, not just us. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, like if you've lost a child or if you lost yeah. someone close to you, um, he's going to bring good out of that. And just trusting that he loves us and he knows what's best for all involved is huge. It, but after walking with him for a while, you begin to understand that he brings good out of these things and that there, there's a rhyme and a reason. We may not know it until we're in heaven with him, but we can trust that he loves us and that he's going to bring good out of everything he allows. Yeah. You know, uh, another issue is unbelief. Yeah. How many times have we struggled with something that, you know, may well be the Holy Spirit? Mm hmm but we just, you know, we just don't, we hear it, we read it, we might even write it down. Right. But we don't, it doesn't really get into here. We you don't know? make it our own. Right, mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. uh, when was the last time that, that you honestly asked the Lord, or myself as well, Lord, would you give me faith? Or more faith. Yeah. We can't have what what we don't have. Right. And we can't have anything that he doesn't give to us in the first place. So, you know, we have to go to him and ask for that faith. And, uh, and of course, read the scriptures or um, listen to teachings or listen to the scriptures. Uh, faith comes through hearing. Right. You know, so it's right. important that we... Uh, that we feed into, the, the scriptures are fed into us. Mm -hmm. Self-credit. Mm -hmm. Taking taking the credit for God's movement in your life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we don't want to think of ourselves like that or, or, or admit it, but sometimes we feel pretty good about ourselves. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
all right, I'm hearing from the Lord. I'm doing good. I'm <laughs> helping his people. I'm, oh, I, boy. I'm an okay guy, right? <laughs> oh, puke. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, is, is the Lord um, getting the credit? Is he getting the glory? Or have we been kind of skimming off some for ourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, these are just honest questions and things. We're trying to get to the bottom, right, of why he is allowing dryness. And many times it's a lesson in uh, different areas. Humility is huge. It, it, there's so many different ways that he humbles us. Yeah. And that he, when he notices pride, there's just so many ways that we can get proud and we don't even see it in ourselves. Yeah. It's scary, really, because we don't see it. We don't always feel it. I mean, sometimes we know, uh-oh, that felt weird. I think that's bad. That, that must be pride, you know. But there are other times when we don't see it at all. We're totally blind to it. And um, he has to stop us to wake us up to see it, yeah. be able to recognize it. You can be uh, proud of your humility or humble about your pride, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Another another consideration is how small is your world? I mean, are you are you centered on you? Does everything revolve around me? Mm -hmm. You know, like the song, "It's all about you. It's not about me." <laughs> you know, I had a friend that used to say, "It's all about me. It's not about you." <laughs> and, and, but the thing is, it is our world revolving around me, me, me. Once again, we have to go to the Lord and ask him, Lord, I know I need to love you more. I need to, I need to love souls. And are we going out of ourselves to include other people in our life? Uh, many of you have prayer burdens. Obviously, we pray for one another and things like that. But when it comes down to it, uh, how small is our world? And is he, is he holding off the goodies so that we'll go out of ourselves? And I know the best thing in the world for me sometimes when I'm struggling and having trials is to go do something for someone else, Absolutely. you know, make a visit Absolutely. to the nursing home or whatever. Right. Um, we mentioned before we run a little food bank here. It's a little mission. And, uh, you know, if we didn't have that, that kind of forces us to get out of ourselves. Uh, plus, we're keeping an, an elderly lady in the front house. We just try to help where we can. Yeah. Uh, and it's not easy, and we want to quit doing that stuff sometimes. But I think that's about... Those are the things that, that pull us out, right? And keep us from yeah. just being me-centered. So, you know, consider that. And on the other side of that, the enemy knows very well that if you're me-centered, you're not Jesus-centered. And so, uh, again, he tries to cause schism or division between you and the Lord. Um, and he revels in the idea of you thinking that you're all alone, you know. And self-pity, that's huge. When self-pity enters in, oh, poor me, oh, I'm so, you know... That's poison. That's real poison. And that turns you, again, that turns you inward onto yourself. And you lose sight of Jesus when you turn inward. So when you start to feel that way, you, you better believe there's a demon in there. And it's a lie. It's a lying spirit. Spirit of condemnation yeah. and false guilt. I'm, kind of I'm just thinking while you're talking. Okay, so many of us have been hurt in the church, by the church, by other Christians. Maybe we've covered up, maybe we've hurt other people. You know, we don't yeah. always recognize yeah. that. But are we, have we gotten to a point where we've closed off from life, from the church, from Christians, from, from, from unbelievers, from anything, because mm -hmm. we don't want to be hurt? You know, what are the reasons why our world might be so small? And another consideration to bring up, and we're going to bring up quite a few. We, we talked about this last night. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit kept bringing up many and varied reasons yeah. for dryness. And another reason could be, honestly again, have you said no to God lately? Is there something that he's asked of you or me or any of us 
that maybe we've said no to him about, oh, boy. that would certainly cause him to pull away a bit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that hurts him. It hurts his heart. I know what it's like. I mean, we lived on top of a high mountain wilderness for five years. No water, no this, no that. And I remember standing in the middle of a field one day looking up to heaven saying, do you hate me? <laughs> Boy, oh, it was so hard for me. She loved it, you know. <laughs> Shangri-La for her. I'm the, the beach surfer water guy. But uh, I, I really, I remember struggling with, Lord, I want to run out of here so bad I can scream. <laughs> and trying to obey him and stay in that place. For five years, man, that was tough. Mm -hmm. And I remember a couple of times taking extended ministry trips <laughs> away from the mountain. Yeah. And kind of having this feeling like, man, you're just, you're running from what you really need to be doing. And, yep, uh, so hoop de doo bet the ministry went real good, right? <laughs> uh, so, so 50-50. <laughs> You can't run from the Lord, no. but we can, we can always ask him to make us stronger. Lord, oh, yeah, this that is, really helps. I promise huge, you. Huge, huge help. If he's asking you for something yeah. and you just can't gut it out, ask him for the grace, for the help, for the strength, and to turn this bitterness into sweetness. Yeah. You know, it, it, and it's okay, it's... You know, if he's asking you to give up something or to let go of something for a time in a season, he's just making room for more, right? He's right. just cleaning up and cleaning out what really shouldn't be there for beautiful things that he wants to put there. It's interesting because my desire always, uh, um, as a photographer and when I was ice skating, was always to convey the love of the Lord to people. And um, as a professional photographer for 25 years, before I got to know the Lord, and then when I did get to know him, I always wanted to use my photographs to illustrate the Psalms or something like that and really touch people. Well, there was a point at which he asked me to put away the cameras. And instead of the gift of uh, with graphics, he brought up, Music is a gift. He gave that to me when I was 58 years old. But there was a gap in between, wasn't there? Uh, it wasn't yeah, overnight. Yeah, there was a gap. There was yeah. a gap. Not a real long one, but it. But the point was he wanted me to put that photography away. And I understand that I had a lot of baggage with that photography because when you're working like that and you're a professional, you know, you move things around, you get things to go your way, and that's a, there's a pride that, definitely can settle in with that um, especially if you have a hefty day rate you can really get a big head and all of that was baggage that the Lord needed to flush out of my system I wish that someday he would allow me to shoot again because I love graphics I love nature and I love to portray the beauty that he's created but he's called me to music instead, and um, and writing, and, and writing, other things. and writing. But yeah. the music is huge, and that's a creative thing. And he's, um, and that's that's a medium that I think uh, conveys more of the love of the Lord and does more for a soul than a photograph. I mean, music's an incredible medium. It really it transports a soul right out of the situation yeah. they're in. So he knew what he was doing when he asked me to hang up my cameras, not yeah. only because of the pride, but also because he had a better gift for me. So I he's remember always, how hard that oh, was. I remember still the hard. tears yeah. I, and, uh, and the yeah. temptations and all that stuff. You see so. a beautiful sunset. You can't just enjoy the sunset. You want to shoot it, you know, and you want to keep it forever. Yeah. I was actually thanking the Lord because <laughs> the last time I went on assignment with her, I think the Jeep was up on two wheels on the left side. The shot. <laughs> well, this all brings up uh, really Psalm 94. Yeah. If you look at verse 12 and 14, Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law mm -hmm. to give him rest from days of trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Uh, I think there's, he's just forming us, he, you know, what good right. parent doesn't uh, discipline a child. I, I think of pilots a lot of time, 
and they're constantly making corrections. You know, it's not like they're saying, bad plane, you did wrong, you know. They're just <laughs> making corrections so that the thing will fly smooth. And the Lord's doing the same GPS with us. Uh, well, yeah, for you who, pet lovers, <laughs> um, you know how your cat can do something really obnoxious, like rip up the couch or um, climb the curtains <laughs> or go to the bathroom in the wrong place. Um or jump up on something they're not supposed to be up on, although we don't have rules like that in this house. They, they can go anywhere they want. But um, you still love your cat. You still want to, or, or dog or, or whatever, you still adore them. You still love them. You still want to love on them and, and hold them and pet them. And you wouldn't dream of getting rid of them over these things. They're just little things, you know. The affection that you have for them is so tremendous. And um, unless the cat is really wicked <laughs> and you <laughs> delivered it of every demon you can think of and it's still, you know, then I can understand finding a new home for it. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you can look at your relationship with the Lord in that way, uh, a cat's mentality and our mentality are light years apart, it just as our mentality is light years apart from the Lord's mentality. He still loves us, and we're just little creatures to him. He still loves us, but um, he's even when we do wrong, he's going to still love us and continue to want to be with us and to draw us close to him. He's not ever going to desert us or push us away, never. Now, the devil would like you to think that you're being pushed away, yeah. but you're not. Um, if he has the intention, like in dryness, to hold you back a little bit, it's only for your good that he's doing that, you know? It's only for your good. Mm. Just remember how much you love your animals, and when they mess up, you still love them. Oh, yeah. They're adorable. You, you know? do. You know you do. <laughs> uh, you husbands know what it's like to share the bed. <laughs> um, With the cat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let It's you... cold. Throw another cat on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cold in here. 